I've tested tons of laptop coolers over the past year, and I've definitely seen some various styles and designs, but nothing quite like this laptop cooler here. This is the Navazip thermoelectric laptop cooling pad. And you heard that right, this laptop cooler uses thermoelectric cooling as it has a thermoelectric cooling unit inside on top of the fans, supposedly to go ahead and provide some incredible cooling capacity. But before we go ahead and dive into some testing, let's go ahead and check out the design and build quality first, and then we'll go ahead and see how well this actually stacks up against all the other coolers we've previously tested. Starting off with the design of this cooler, on the surface it really doesn't look like anything too special as it only has three visible fans, two up top for intake and one at the very bottom that features a blue LED. Similar to a lot of other laptop coolers on the market, it does have legs with tons of adjustability so you can go ahead and select the proper height for your laptop. But if you start to dive a little deeper, you'll start to notice what makes this laptop cooler so unique, as the entire center of the cooler is actually made of metal and is spring loaded. And as we'll see in just a moment, this is where the actual cooling takes place. As when you actually plug in the cooler in the power, you actually get two buttons on the sides that become active. One for three various levels of fan speed for the dual 2500 RPM fans up top and one to actually turn on the thermoelectric cooling. The thermoelectric cooler that's inside of this laptop cooler uses what's called the Peltier effect, which in simplified terms is basically a way to use electricity to move heat from one side of a cooling module to another where it then can be dissipated by the bottom fan and some kind of heat sink. As a result, when the thermoelectric cooler is turned on, it actually drops the temperature of this surface by over 10 degrees Celsius, and this goes below the ambient air temperature, which is actually quite impressive and is something you just can't do with other cooling solutions. But here's where the downside comes with this type of cooler. As it uses so much electricity, you can't use the actual USB-C cable plugging it into your laptop if you're somewhere. Because the manufacturer says that, like most laptops, won't actually have enough power to go ahead and keep this cooler running. And after doing some testing, I think they're actually right. Because when I measured the power draw of this cooler, it was nearly 13 watts power being drawn, which is actually, from my understanding, well over the typical max of 7.5 watts on most laptops USB-A ports. So that's definitely a limitation of this cooler because you just can't plug it in wherever you are. You actually have to have a separate power brick. But I think it's something you can live with as long as this cooler actually performs well. So let's go ahead and dive into some benchmarks to see how well this cooler stacks up against all the other coolers we've previously tested. The laptop that we used for our testing is this older Asus GL522 as it's been used in all of our laptop reviews. To start off our test, let's go ahead and look at a stock temperature test. And after letting the system sit at idle for about five minutes, the CPU registered around 43 degrees Celsius, which placed it in the middle of the pack when it comes to the coolers I've previously tested. And it's far from the best, which is still the IETS GT500 V2. This is about a five degree drop in temperature from the stock configuration, which is a nice improvement, but it's still just not as good as some of the other options out there. And when we went to go ahead and run our CPU stress test using ADA64, this cooler was actually able to outperform most of the other coolers, just falling short the two, the IETS GT500 V2 and the Climcool Plus vacuum laptop cooler, which to be honest is quite impressive just due to the fact as those coolers have pretty much wiped the board compared to all the other coolers we previously tested. Although the max temperature results are actually really impressive with this laptop cooler, there is one thing that you have to keep in mind, and that's noise, as this laptop cooler is it's pretty noisy when it comes to the operational level because when I tested it, it came in around 51.4 decibels, which is the third highest next to the IETS GT500 V2 and the Climcool Plus. And it can get quite annoying if you do leave it running at full speed, especially with the fans and the actual thermoelectric cooler going, unless you have something like headphones on. So just keep that in mind whenever you have something like this hooked up to your laptop. With everything mentioned based on my testing and experience with this cooler, I gotta say the concept is honestly really cool and I'm actually really impressed with what actually came out of this. But, and I would like to see a lot more offerings kind of similar to this in the future, but this one is still definitely limited at this point because at the point where you still need to pay nearly $70 to get something that's not the best, I just kind of can't recommend it to anybody because you could get something like the IETS GT500 V2, which not only performs better, but also when you can turn it down a little bit, becomes actually much quieter. So if you want to go ahead and get a premium laptop cooler, get the IETS GT500 V2. And if you want something more budget friendly, look at something like what I always recommend, which is the Kaiben due to the low $12 price point over on Amazon. Speaking of Amazon, all the products I've mentioned in this video will all be linked in the video description down below if you want to check any of them out. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys check out my recent review of the IETS GT500 V2 to understand why it's the best laptop cooling pad out there on the market. 
And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe for more content like this, and let me know in the comments down below which laptop cooler we should check out next, and I'll see you guys in the next video.